Coach Greg Adams came up with a term called son husband. We're going to take a look at Coach Greg Adams and him describing what a son husband is. And then we're going to and we're going to rock with this tonight about this whole son husband thing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what I heard coming from Shannon Sharp. Talk about this son husband epidemic. All oh, the pictures messed up. Oh, hold on. Before we get started. Money is making it my thing because I'm trying to be rich, trying to put away meals. Here comes the money. Here we go. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Shout out to Mr. Worldwide, Quiet Storm, with the $5 Super Chat and a channel member. Appreciate you, brother, with the $5 Super Chat. No, what does Lee say? No comment, no question, just a pure love of the game. How do you feel, Lee, when 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 um, people in the chat do that? What do you think about them? They are amazing. <laughs> All right, there. Let me see. All right, appreciate you, Quiet Storm, for for supporting a brother. You always do, and and helping me grow and and participating. I appreciate that. All right, let's get to Coach Greg Adams. Coach Greg Adams. I don't know if he was the one that coined the term "son husband," but I I really know he made it popular. And he's going to be talking about Kevin Durant in just a second. Let's talk about this son husband epidemic all oh, the pictures messed up but you see this picture it should be fuzzy this is my censored picture here let's talk about these damn son husbands yo all right this is kevin durant this is a picture of him smooching his mother that's his first of all let me just say gross this is absolutely gross who is this old and still going around and kissing their mother in the mouth like that? Damn. Yeah, that 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 that's a bit much, man. Hell no, to the no no no. I I'm sorry. This looks all kind of. Woo. Yeah. No. Not not not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I, uh. Let me ask you guys something. You guys, are you walking around here kissing your mama like this? Is this what you're doing? I don't, you know, if I had a homeboy that I walked up on and he kissed his mama like that, you know what I'm going to be like? Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Yep, straight up, I'm out. Mama. Now, there are several pictures of this. If you Google this, there are several pictures of them kissing just like this. This isn't one. There's about 10 or 15. Many men will win their championship and they will bring their wives. They might be solo. They don't really bring their mama up and do this type of behavior out in public. But people found this endearing. Oh, my God. Kevin Durant and the mom. Did you see them? They have a one. I'm sorry. Excuse the, the living hell out of me. What in the world is so somebody got to please explain to me. And I'm not being sarcastic here. Somebody got to explain. Can somebody please in the chat explain to me why this is endearing? What is so endearing about this? You know what this looks like to me? Emotional damage. <laughs> Yeah, nah, that, that don't look right to me. Wonderful relationship. Uh, this is a little past wonderful. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit very a more uncomfortable type relationship. But many men do have this relationship in the community that when they don't have a father, they have to have this type of relationship with the mother because they've gone through tough times. They've overcome the... M Messy Michonne, do you remember that YouTube clip? Uh, the YouTube story of that chick 
who had a threesome with the, with her dude and his mama. Ugh. That's what this reminds me of. Ugh. I mean, there are literally people out here doing this crap. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Odds. I mean, I don't know who his father is, but obviously she hit the genetic lottery, or he did, enough for him to have a seven foot eight wingspan and have the athleticism of a five foot nine guy. So she wins because she endured all of that enough for him, her to capitalize on his ability, his natural ability, God gifted ability. And thus she can take credit for making him that. Now, I want to watch this, watch this. If he became a criminal and thug, whose fault is it? Daddy, dad's fault. I didn't have no daddy and all my homies got locked up or killed. All that bullshit. But because he was able to have God given ability because she, she gave a man who had this genetic combination access to her, then she can say, I did it. And, she, and he actually credits her as being the real MVP when he won the MVP award. He cried, you the real MVP. A lot of men do that in the NFL because these people tend to come from fatherless homes. If you look at it, the son husband believes that the woman, the mother can do no wrong. She can do no wrong. She's the queen, even when she's doing wrong. There's an example of Tupac who has a song called Dear Mama. And, which and as we found out about Tupac, as we found out about Tupac, his mother lied to him his entire life about his father. Tupac's mother told Tupac his whole life that his father was dead. And Tupac had wrote, not just Dear Mama, many, he has many songs that reference his, his, his love, his admiration for his mother, even though his mother lied to him. And then he found out she lied to him about his father. And he still, you know what, K oh, Kofa, K was it Kofa that gave me this yesterday? That in, in black culture, that no matter how trashy moms are that the justification for that is is the phrase but that's your mama but that's your mama you know sometimes you know there's a big temptation up here there's a huge temptation at times for me to get a little personal I'm going to tell you guys a very recent story. So um, I am, and I, 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 I don't really, I, I'll, I'll admit this. I am, I am estranged from my mother. Two years ago, I mean, those of you who watched my content know that I was raised by my grandmother. So, yeah. So two years ago, my mother's father was killed in a car accident. And because I tend, I am in my immediate family, I am the most productive person in the family. The responsibility for putting him away landed on me. So my grandfather um, was killed in Mississippi. And during the time of his death, there were, we were, Mississippi, the state of Mississippi, were still under extreme COVID restrictions, meaning they were not, they were, this was two years ago, they were not having um, in, in, um, indoor funerals, even though the rest of the country had pretty much started back doing, you know, you know, had started opening it up, things were happening, you know, things that kind of got back almost 100%. So, but Mississippi was still under restrictions because Mississippi was still on fire from COVID, like real bad, you know? Um, so when I, 
when I had to plan the funeral with the funeral home, and yes, Michelle, yeah, I had to pay. Um, when I had to uh, plan the funeral, the funeral home told me, listen, we, we can't have an indoor funeral. It has to be outdoors. It has to be a graveside funeral. I said, okay. They, and I was like, uh, you know, because of the restrictions. And I said, okay. So I notified the entire family, listen, we got to have a graveside funeral. The state of Mississippi is saying this. We cannot do this. Um, what do you guys think about this? By the way, no one came to Mississippi to help me plan this funeral. No one came to Mississippi to claim them, even though I reached out, no one. I would, And my grandfather has six children by my grandmother. Not a one of them came to help me during this process of their father, their father, just, just my grandfather. So the information went out multiple times regarding the status of the funeral. Um, when the funeral date was set, um, the funeral home told me, listen, uh, what we can do for you is we can do a viewing the day before the funeral. Um, we'll let five people at a time and your viewing can, is going to, we can give you a viewing for an hour, but only five people at a time can come in and do the viewing. I sent out that information to the entire family, which included my mother. Uh, five days before the funeral, I reached out directly to my mother, which at this point, believe it or not, I hadn't spoken to her in quite a few years. I reached out directly to her and I said, hey, Ma, listen, uh, why don't you come where I am? Because I don't live in the same state as my mom. I said, let me bring you to me and then you go with me and your mother, my grandmother, you go with me to Mississippi, we'll go together. I said, because I don't want you to miss the viewing. And my mother is the oldest child. My mother said, no, I'm going to go with your sister. I said, okay, fine, huh? no big deal. Um, I asked her actually twice. She said, no big deal. We get to the, we get to miss the, the, the viewing is on a Friday. We get to the funeral. My mother, we get to the funeral home. There is, my mother's nowhere to be found. My mother shows up that night about 10 o'clock that night and she gets angry. She was like, well, I'll just see my dad at the funeral. I said, they're not going to open up the casket. We're doing a graveside funeral. I told you this. And she went and she cussed me out. She cussed me clean the fuck out. And for the cherry on top, she decided to she decided to go ahead to rope to let me know um in on no certain and under no certain terms how much she hated me so now as a person who did not grow up with her as a person who was subjected to whatever she wanted to attempt to subject me to it's one thing to suspect your parent not liking you. It's another thing to fucking hear it. So my grandmother hearing this stuff, which is funny, this is only two years ago. My grandmother, uh, we talked about about a month or so ago. She said it didn't happen. <laughs> she said it didn't happen. So, <laughs> so I was like, what do you mean it didn't happen? I said, Grandma, no, this happened. It happened right in front of you. She said, that never happened. I was like, Damn. <laughs> and I just chuckled. It was so then I had to re, then I literally caught, found myself re-explaining the situation to my grandmother who was there. This is my mother's, my grandmother is, is my mother's mother. And my grandmother looked at me and she said, <laughs> she looked at me and she said, well, you need to do something about it. That's your mother. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I know. Well, you know, you only get one. And I was like, but you heard what she said. Ah, it doesn't matter what she said. That's your mother. 
And I go, what does that mean? That means you better respect her. <laughs> so to Greg, Coach Greg Adams point, no matter how bad mom behaves, there's still someone around that's going to always cover for the error. Now, I'm not the son to do it because I'm not a son husband. Not at all. Not a little bit. So I understand what Greg, Coach Greg Adams is saying because I've seen it in action. And with my brother, um, Kofa, yeah, he just put it, he put it, let me put it up on the screen. Yeah, that's what she said. That's still your mama. Even though she did that, that's still your mama. That's that's exactly what she said. I'm sorry. So, you know, trying to recall this crap, but that's still your mama. That's still your mama is the excuse for everything. Even when she creates a son husband, it's always Jermaine's fault. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's get back to Coach Greg Adams. So to Greg Adams' point, they're into Kofa's point. There's all it's it's but that's still your mama though. As if that's still your mama though. As if that makes the bad behavior okay. I mean, good lord. She says, and I quote, my mother was a crack fiend mama. But now she is a black queen mama. Hold up. Let's go back. Wait a minute. Does he get a pass if he was a crack fiend? Would he get a pass? He don't even get a pass for going to get a pack of Newports. He don't even get a pass for going to pack of Newports. He gets to get all the damn, it was your fault. But the mother's a queen. The son husband believes that the mother is the queen no matter what. She can do no wrong. Does that steal the your The other mom? thing the son husband does, he's afraid to confront women when they're wrong. A lot of us do this as a natural sense of How many times have I said that throughout my streams? One of, one of the, another big thing that we have as black men is the absolute fear to confront our women. We don't confront our women because our entire life, the authority figure that we had to bow to was a woman. So when a woman is out of order or a woman starts barking, most of our natural instincts is to shut up, not say nothing, or try to just, you know, do some version of, but that's still your mama. We don't have, look. A lot of us made fun of like, when we see white families in the grocery, or white mothers in the grocery store with their, with their sons, and their sons are cutting up and having a fit and then calling them bitches out in, out in the grocery store and going buck ass wild. We, I, you know, we have, or our mothers had, I wish I would, you know, I'm going to get you. But there's something to be said that in their culture, they don't really develop a lot of son husbands. Now, it seems like they're developing son husbands because of the bratty behavior that we get to watch. But as I got to talk to a couple of white families, is that the boys in the families, they treat their mothers like they're just some other woman. Be well, and that's because their fathers are around, and women, and a lot of white women start to defer or or respect their sons, especially when they get into them teenage years. the The dynamic shifts; that dynamic never shifts with us. It never shifts with us. Mom is always is always at the head of the. You can be sixty years old and you if it doesn't matter if your mother shows up at your house where you pay the bills you still gotta bend the knee to your mother in your house mother 
is absolute in black culture. And a lot of our women celebrate that. They hold it with a sense of pride. But then when you start talking to them about the damn outcomes that that's producing, then all of a sudden, you know, we got we got we got major problems. But let's get back to Coach Greg Adams because I need to get to San, Shannon Sharp. Protection. So you see a woman staggering and stumbling her way through an argument or a debate, and I'm debating her, and I'm giving her the business. I'm whipping her into the rope, and I'm giving her the big boot. <laughs> and then I take my elbow pad off, throw it into the audience, bounce off the ropes, and hit her with the rock bottom elbow drop. You know who's going to save her? A dude. Now, he should save her if I'm harassing her, slandering her, and so forth. There should be no need for me to just be talking reckless about her. But if she did engage in some sort of debate or an argument, there was a car accident, she caused it, so I believe, and I get in and say, what the hell's wrong with you? Here comes Mighty Mouse. Here I come to save the day. And he will swoop in. He will have seen the wrong done, but he would say, we need to take it easy on this one. 